Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. My name is Troy, and today we've got another six-wheel drive vehicle taking on the rally course. <laughs> Welcome back guys, if you missed the last episode, we took the Hennessy Velociraptor down our rally course, and it did fairly well, it came 11th place, just above the Ford F450 Super Duty, and today I want to see how the AMG 6x6 compares to the other 6x6 we have in the game. Now, I've driven this thing in online racing, and just as we had with the Velociraptor in the last episode, it understeers like mad. It's a long vehicle, it doesn't like to turn in for corners. So I'm curious to see whether this thing is faster or slower than the Velociraptor. So let's go ahead and build this thing to S1 class. If this is the first episode of the series you've seen then all the vehicles keep their standard drivetrain that means all-wheel drive vehicles remain all-wheel drive vehicles and two-wheel drive vehicles keep their standard two-wheel drive drivetrain this thing is six-wheel drive the same as the velociraptor uh, now we can go ahead and put in some engine swaps we can go for the racing v8 which we had in the Velociraptor, which I think is what we're going to do. We may come back and supercharge it later. Uh, now, as far as modifications go, we can go ahead and fit any of these we like, but of course they all add weight, so we're not going to bother with any of those, but just in case you're wondering what the options are. They do look very cool, but they just add too much weight and slow the vehicle down. Now, tires for this thing we can actually go ahead and upgrade the tires to the off-road race tire compound and we're going to make the wheels as thick as possible what size are we actually getting three five fives front and rear that is a thick tire i have to say now let's go ahead and upgrade the drivetrain so we want a race clutch we want to go ahead and put in the six speed race transmission carbon fiber drive shaft and we want to go for rally differential and then we're going to go and upgrade the brakes to the best possible we're going to go ahead and put this thing on off-road springs and dampers it doesn't allow us any extra height but of course this thing is built to go off-road already so it shouldn't be too much of an issue we're not going to bother with anti-roll bars but we do want to decrease the weight as much as possible now this thing even with the rate weight reduction is heavier than the velociraptor it is uh, almost three and a quarter tons the velociraptor was two and a half tons by the time we'd re reduced the weight on it so this thing is a little bit heavier and it's going to have about the same amount of power so it'll be interesting to see how that compares uh, we'll go ahead and fully upgrade the engine and it does look like we're going to need the supercharger once again which is fine uh, we're just under s1 class in this vehicle but just like the velociraptor we can stick on the supercharger and we'll go ahead and upgrade the supercharger as well so we're getting that 1300 horsepower the same as the last time we've got all-wheel drive six wheels driving the vehicle but we have got a little bit more weight this time so if the handling of the mercedes is better that could result in a smoother run and a faster lap time but i think the weight getting up the hill and the understeer in the corners is going to slow this thing down but let's see how it performs on the rally course i'm going to go ahead and tune this thing and paint it and i'll see you guys out there all right our second six by six to take on the rally course the gucci covered mercedes six by six let's see how this thing performs already i've understeered into a fence we've got some nice gold wheels that isn't going to last very long once they get covered in mud this thing is a little bit wobbly actually it doesn't feel quite as planted 
as the Velociraptor, but it does seem to turn in a little bit better. This thing does have a slightly better turn in. Again, we're wide through there, just like we were on the first run in the last episode. I'm comparing this thing to the Velociraptor because that was our other 6x6 and I've absolutely cocked that up. But let's see what we can do. This is going to be more of a feeler run just to see how we can actually get this thing down the course. Whether it wants to bounce around, which it seems to be doing. I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but this thing is bouncing everywhere. It's still controllable, but it's a little bit unusual. Now let's see how it deals with the hairpin. Eh, it's about the same. It's very difficult to tell, to be honest. I've biased the drivetrain to 70% to the rear wheels, 30% to the front. So this thing is almost rear wheel drive in the hopes that that will let us slide through the corner a little bit better. And whoa, we've actually fallen over in the Mercedes. That's not gone well. I'm going to continue anyway just to see how it copes with the next few corners but that is something we're going to have to be wary of i did say this thing feels a little bit wobbly it feels a bit more top end heavy compared to the ford the next couple of corners here let's see what we can do it's not understeering quite as bad but i'm still having to slow it down a lot more than some of the normal four-wheel drive vehicles. But coming down the hill, it's not gonna be a very good lap time. We can't really compare that to anything um, because of the roll. And of course, we did hit the fence and miss the checkpoint. So it was quite a poor run, but it was more of a feeler run just to see how this thing handled. And already we've beaten a few of the lower vehicles like the AMC Gremlin, the Firebird, the Volvo, and the Crown Vic. We have beaten those, even with a roll and an almost missed checkpoint. So, this thing has potential. I'm hoping that it might be slightly better than the Velociraptor. But let's see how we do in the next run. Right, we're aiming for a 2.10. So, we've got almost 12 seconds to make up. But hopefully, if we keep this thing under control that is a possible it'll be interesting to see how we do at the end of this run if we can keep all of those six wheels on the ground this time i'm slowing down quite a lot for those corners because of that understeer it obviously doesn't struggle with the water splashes at all because it has so much weight behind it it just plows through there like a train this is a little bit more controlled. Now, let's not miss this checkpoint this time. It gets a big bounce coming out of there. But we didn't miss the checkpoint this time. And that's going to give us a lot more time back. We don't slide through that corner like most vehicles do. Coming on down the straight here. This can get a little bit bumpy. You can just see the vehicle bouncing around. It just doesn't feel quite as planted and it's over again. Oh dear, it's not going well for the Mercedes. We're going to carry on just because I want some practice in this thing. But it just wants to flip over this thing. Luckily we recovered a little bit faster than we did on the previous run. But that's going to be the real trick in this thing. Is just keeping all those six wheels on the ground. Right, coming up the hill now. Let's see what kind of speed this thing actually achieves getting up the hill. Almost 120, so that's pretty good. But we have to have a big dive on the brakes and we hit a fence coming out the top there. This thing just does not want to turn in for some of these corners. You have to really get it slowed down. And this corner, especially here, is where we rolled last time. So we're going to take it a little bit slower it was bobbling around but it didn't fall over which was good this corner here not too bad the last couple of corners here i'm a bit wary about now that i've seen it roll a couple of times i'm just going to avoid putting the power down whilst we're turning coming down the hill it is going to be an improvement over the last run 
by almost four seconds so that is good we're heading in the right direction but we did roll the thing again so we've got one more attempt every vehicle gets three attempts at putting down their best lap time i think the trick is going to be just to not roll it and we'll see how we do but i don't think it's going to beat the velociraptor it certainly doesn't feel as stable as that vehicle so let's see what we do in the final attempt okay here we go the gucci mobile is off on its final run we get a good launch through there all six wheels spinning on the tarmac as we head onto the dirt this is where the mercedes is good down the straights and through the water splashes but you can already see this thing bobbling around i'm very nervous about turning in now for the fear of falling over but through the water splashes is where we make up time with this thing i'm turning in early and it's just not doing a thing we've gone way wide through that water splash but no matter we will continue up the hill here this is where we get a big jump and the front wheels in the air that is very concerning I'm just taking it easy through some of the corners because I don't want to roll this thing over again I think that's where we're gonna make up the most time I come in down this straight here it gets very unsettled down here you can just see it moving around and jumping this is where we had a roll last time so we're just gonna take it slow we don't flip it this time coming into the hairpin it's slightly better through the hairpin than the Velociraptor. It does seem to get turned in there better. Coming into these couple of corners here, we've got to really slow it down. And then fully on the power going up the hill. This is where we can use the six wheel drive. We can use that 1300 horsepower. We get one side lifted up, but we didn't roll it. I counter steered it this time, so we didn't actually flip it. Now we flipped it here on the first run, so I'm just going to take it easy through here. The right hand side lifting up slightly, but we didn't flip it over. That is a good sign. Slowing it down for the last couple of corners. We just need to get through there. And I think we're going to have a half decent lap time. We're past the two minute mark. If we can power it on down the hill, we might be able to beat the Velociraptor. There was a Velociraptor's time. And we cross at a 212.166. That is going to put it a couple of places behind the Velociraptor. It's in fact behind the Super Duty as well. So it is slightly slower and a lot less stable. But let's take it to the leaderboard and see how it compares. Well, there we go. The Mercedes-Benz 6x6 is going to be a 13th place for this vehicle 13th place unlucky for some and unlucky for us we had two rolls in this thing it was just so unsettled it was just horrible a 02.12166 is going to be the lap time for the gucci mercedes 6x6 it just didn't feel planted at all after the first couple of rollovers um i was just super nervous taking any speed into the corners so if you're building this thing as a rally car i would recommend stiffening the suspension slightly and maybe even lowering it just a little bit you can see there how much arch gap we have going on and i just don't think it was as planted and as stuck to the ground as the velociraptor so there we go the better of the two six by sixes was the velociraptor but i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode if you did then make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you knew we're going for 2000 subscribers we're almost there so if you want to support channel then please do and if you have any vehicle suggestions you want to see me use in the next episode then don't forget to comment those below but that's going to do it for today thank you so much for watching we'll be back next week with another vehicle but until then a goodbye